Hello everyone! In just two months, New World should enter the beta testing stage with a full release scheduled in August. And it's time to take a look at some of the revealed game mechanics to figure out what's good, bad or just plain dumb. Keep in mind that almost all available video footage and screenshots are from the very early alpha stage and is already outdated compared even to current alpha. So don't judge only by what you see. NDA should be lifted in beta and only then we can make up our minds about the game. But even now we can form an opinion based on blogs and videos posted by developers and some of the game mechanics that I see is weird, to say the least. And let's start with dev blocks dedicated to player settlements and housing. We can choose to join one of three factions that are in conflict and are directly competing with one another for resources, power and influence. This is important and I want you to remember this. All player factions are meant to compete with each other and are in conflict. This is core design and lore of the game. Players can join a faction only upon reaching level 10 and this choice is permanent. You can't change the faction later on, which implies that your faction choice actually does matter. Sadly, with currently planned game design this is totally not true. Also, players can join any PvP activities only after they join a faction and PvP is optional. But players can only opt in or out of PvP at sanctuaries. Which tells us that the game won't be a player killing fest and only players who flag themselves for PvP can get attacked. And that's fine by me. PvP is a topic for a separate video anyway. So what is settlement and how it is different from fort? Aethernum is divided into distinct territories, many of which have their own settlement and fort. A settlement is where players own homes, craft, refine items, trade, take faction missions, socialize, and graveyard there serves as a spawn point for killed players. A territory's fort is a major point of defense for a territory. Fort is what comes under attack during PvP war and PvE invasions, and it's where players need to go in order to claim an unclaimed territory. If the territory is uncontrolled, players only have to pay a claim fee. But if the territory is already controlled by a company, which automatically means by other players, the territory must be taken through war, so through PvP and only by a company that belongs to other faction. So far so good. The leader of a company is called Governor, and it's the person who created that company. When a company takes control of a territory, the governor of the company also becomes the governor of the controlled territory. Governor can adjust taxes and fees in their settlement, also is responsible for upgrading and maintaining different crafting stations, lifestyle buffs and fort by starting town projects. Lifestyle buffs are powerful long-term bonuses for things like crafting and combat that only apply to your territory's residents. Another important piece right here, settlements can provide powerful long-term bonuses to its residents. And residents are players who own house in your settlement. Ok, this all sounds great. And owning a settlement can be a fun endeavor and should keep many players busy, force them to work together on what they need most and not only upgrade different crafting stations or work on lifestyle buffs, but also prepare your settlement for PvP war or PvE invasion, depending on what is needed most by completing different town projects. And when a town project is activated, players in the town can take missions that progress the project towards completion. These missions award players with experience and currency. PvP missions also award influence and this is how one faction undermines another faction in order to start a PvP war. Any member of your company and everyone else living in town can work together to complete the project. So if I read this correctly, then only company that owns that settlement and its residents can participate in upgrading the settlement. Which actually makes sense, but do correct me if I'm wrong. Each time a town project is completed, the settlement levels up. If settlements can level up, obviously they can also level down. And settlements begin to level down when upkeep is not paid to the controlling faction or if players fail to repel a PvE corrupted invasion. Players can use the services of any settlement, so players from other factions that have only low level settlements can always choose to visit other faction settlements to craft their high tier armor and weapons, 
that potentially will be used against the very same settlement where they crafted it. Just wonderful, instead of getting together in an MMO game and to level up their own settlements, to be able to participate in an arms race, players can go and craft whatever they need at enemy settlement. But it gets even better. How do players join a settlement? Remember, you can choose to join one of three factions that are in conflict over Eternum and are directly competing with one another. So to join a settlement, player needs to buy a house there. But anyone can live in any house, in any settlement, regardless of which faction they are in, or which company currently controls the territory. And even if the territory changes hands, the residents of a settlement are generally unaffected, aside to any changes to taxation, upgrades and lifestyle buffs the new controlling company might make. <sighs> And this is a good example on how developers are trying to please everyone, but I'm quite sure that in the end they will only manage to annoy everyone. And settlements are a place you'll want to call home and fight to protect. You might end up defending your settlement against players who live in the very same settlement. And even if settlement changes factions, nothing happens. Please tell me, how do you like this design? To me it's a very dumb one and totally immersion breaking bullshit. I'm not saying that players need to lose houses, not at all. Easiest would be to give them enough time after settlement is lost to move all their items to a new home, or even automatically move it to the closest settlement that belongs to the same faction or whatever, but not like this. Settlements are supposed to be tight and friendly communities where all players work together to reach a common goal, but in your world any enemy player can buy a house in your settlement and benefit from all perks that comes with residency, and then just attack you, plain idiotic. Any player who didn't contribute even a bit can immediately use the best bonuses available in Eternum. all you have to do is buy a house in the best settlement. Well, technically it's a little bit more complicated than just buying a house, players need to reach level 20 and do some missions there to increase their standings with that settlement, but it's simple enough. Also players can have more than one house and houses are instanced, so any settlement can have an unlimited amount of residents. And houses come in different sizes and can be personalized with cosmetics and trophies, but that's not really important if in an MMO enemies can live side by side during the day and kill each other during the night, and all that without any real consequences. Why developers are so freaking afraid of consequences? In my opinion, at the very least, governors should have an option not only to tax residents for all services that settlement provides, but non-residents too. Then enemy faction players could still use services provided by the settlement, but would pay much more and thus support their enemies financially. Also, residents should not be able to attack their own settlement, this is just outrageous. But if Amazon Game Studios really want to call governors the rulers of territories, with the ability to shape their dominion as they are presenting them now, then governors must have more options and not only to adjust all fees and taxes for residents and non-residents, but also to have ability to completely deny residency and services to other factions. This is how emergent gameplay happens. Players have all the tools to create their own stories, but Amazon wants to give everyone everything and that will be boring and eventually fail. This is just my opinion on how to make the game immersive and add more incentives for players to work together within their own faction settlements, force them to create communities and alliances. Developers always try to please all players and it never ever works and never ever will work. I hope developers will change this so it will start to make any sense and players will feel attached to their factions and will care about their companies and settlements, otherwise it will be just another generic game where factions don't matter, settlements don't matter and territories are there just for the sake of territories, where player choices don't matter and who is winning or losing also doesn't matter. I can only hope that Amazon has a clear vision and that they know what they are doing, as this game might be really amazing, Dark Souls-like action combat with 50 vs 50 player fights. Beta in July will shed more light on this, and I urge all players to be vocal about things you don't like. And even if nothing will change, you can tell yourself that you have tried, and Amazon just sucks at making MMOs and listening to their community. Thanks for watching and see you soon.